Hello, this is Eloisa with Math Leopard, and welcome to a summary of the three books of occult philosophy by Heinrichus Cornelius Agrippa von Nettesheim. Book 1, Chapters 1 through 4. Ours is a threefold existence, consisting of the divine or intellectual, celestial, and elementary planes. All inferior are governed by their superior. That is, all virtues of the higher realms influence those in the lower. The chief worker conveys his omnipotency upon us by way of the angels, the heavens, the stars, the elements, the animals, the plants, metals, and stones. However, the wisest amongst us understand that it is therefore possible to ascend in kind to first cause, wherein lies infinitely many virtues the majority of which we have yet to experience. These virtues may be sought by way of natural philosophy in the elemental plane. Book I covers natural magic, mathematics and astrology in the celestial plane. Book II concerns celestial magic, and finally ceremonial magic in the divine realm, wherein we discover the use of sacred rituals and ceremonies to gain audience with diverse intelligences, covered in Book 3. Magic seeks to unite the virtues of things by applying them to each other, joining those suitable inferior objects with their corresponding superior influences. Natural philosophy does this by analyzing the causes, effects, times, places, expressions of things, as well as their whole and their parts. Whence all things flow, whence mankind beast, whence fire, whence rain and snow, whence earthquakes are, why the whole ocean beats over his banks and then again retreats, whence strength of herbs, whence courage, rage of brutes, all kinds of stones, of creeping things and fruits. Mathematical philosophy seeks higher realms by way of the quantity the form in three-dimensional space, the courses of celestial bodies, waxing and waning of the moon, eclipsing of the sun and moon, and all those means delineated in the practice of natural philosophy. How the sun doth rule the twelve zodiac signs, the orb that's measured round about with lines, it doth the heaven's starry way make known, and strange eclipses of the sun and moon. Arcturus also, and the stars of rain, the seven stars likewise, and Charles his wane. Why winter suns make towards the west so fast? What makes the night so long ere they be past? Theological philosophy seeks union with first cause, through God and mind, communion with angels and devils, understanding of the soul, religion, and sacred mysteries, the virtues of words and figures, secret operations and mysterious seals, as well as by a divine approach to mathematical and natural philosophies. There is no work that is done by mere magic, nor any work that is merely magical that does not comprehend in full these three philosophies. There are four elements which are the original components of all corporeal things, fire, earth, water, and air. And when these things are destroyed, they decay back into those elements of which they were composed. However, there is no entirely pure elements in the sensible world, save for the element of earth, which remains uncorrupted and will regain its purity after dissolution. According to Plato, fire is hot and dry, earth is dry and cold, water is cold and moist, and air is moist and hot. We see that water is the opposite of fire, in that they share no attributes, and earth is in opposition to air. A threefold attribute rubric sees fire as composed of brightness, thinness, and motion, air as darkness, thinness, and motion, water is darkness, thickness, and motion, and finally earth is darkness, thickness and quietness. As such, fire attributes to air and water the activity of motion, to air the property of thinness.
whereas earth attributes to water and air the quality of darkness, and to water the weight of heaviness. Fire is twice as bright, three times as thin, and four times more movable than air. Air is twice as bright, three times as thin, and four times more movable than water. And water is twice as bright, three times as thin, and four times more movable than earth. So the ratio of attributes from fire to air are equivalent to the ratios of air to water and water to earth. Each of the four elements has threefold nature, in that they are either cardinal, fixed, or mutable, yielding an expression of twelve. Add to twelve the seven celestial bodies, we arrive at nineteen. Pythagorean reduction of nineteen to one plus nine gives us ten, which further reduces to one plus zero, or the unity one. There are three orders of elements. The first order consists of the incorruptible, those which cannot be compounded or changed, neither can they be mixed. They can do all things upon all things. These are analogous to prime numbers, indivisible and incorruptible. For example, two, three, five, and seven. The second order is composed of compounded, changeable and impure elements, which may, by means of natural magic, reduce to their pure constituents. The analogy here is with compound numbers, for example, 4, 6, 8, and 9, which decompose to 2 times 2, 2 times 3, 2 times 2 times 2, and 3 times 3, respectively. The third order consists of those things which, in and of themselves, are not fixed elements, but twice compounded, various and changeable, one into the other. These are the infallible medium, the soul of the middle nature. From these proceed bindings, loosenings, transmutation, knowledge and prophecy, drawing away of evil and attraction of the good. These are the perfect numbers such as six, which can be expressed as the sum of its proper divisors, namely 1 plus 2 plus 3, as well as being expressed as the product of its natural divisors, 1 times 2 times 3. 6 here is more than just a perfect number. It's high magical. Thanks for playing, and I'll see you next time.